All right, part two. Part two of this shit show that we call Thursday. Uh, Meg, how are you? Pam, Ray, Raekwon, I should call you. But you know what? Ray sounds cooler. Claudia, how are you? Oh, thank you. Roshak's Redemption, how are you? Thank you for being one of my first subscribers. And along with the other subscribers, I'm sorry I haven't been following your names uh, because recently I have been kind of on and off with YouTube. So considering YouTube's algorithm and all their nonsensical bullshit, so yeah, what are you going to do with that? So yeah, it's one of those things, one of those days, ladies and gentlemen. One of those days. Uh, so yeah. It's a uh, one hell of a nightmare, but hey, it's my American nightmare, so yeah. Um, I'll look at the posing right here. So I might as well put the camera right here, right in front of me. Why? Because I need to, I need to speak to the audience. And I'm also gonna have to check the duck work. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna have to check that fucking equipment out before I come back home. Let me see here. Mini split. Alright, I'm gonna take a look at that before I come back. I know I, I'm not dawdling, I'm just trying to make sure I get everything in order. So! Yeah, so anyway, as we left off in part one, part two, uh, I'm, I'm really talking about kids entertainment and stuff like that, but also just the way Netflix, like again, Netflix and all their, their nonsense, and granted, I, I don't mind the streaming services, but I, I don't trust Netflix now because they're, they're blatantly just putting it out there, and especially with this documentary I was talking about earlier, Cutie, which reeks of pedo and I'm just like ew it's like why do you have that like first of all it's about an 11 year old girl who wants to become a dancer uh or you know who's obsessed with twerking and is, is somehow you know you know is, is she's going against her Muslim conservative family like first of all like, you, you have to mention conservative? Why is it a conservative view that you don't want your children hanging out with, like, or being, you know, objectified like that? Or, or better yet, you know... You know, you know, why is it a conservative view that you want to protect kids? You know, or, you know, children's lives don't matter to you fucking sick fucks? I mean, children's, like, you know, kids' lives matter. Children's lives matter. I mean, you are literally, you know, you're you're the fucking problem of this situation. If you, you're endorsing this, I'm sorry, but you know, it's it's unhealthy. It's unfucking healthy to have this. Give me a second, folks. Stopping by a gun store real quick. Not to get one. I just gotta enter the parking lot just to check something. I know my dad's gonna flip if he fucking finds me here. But give me a second. go wrong today. I just don't want it to go even worse. Oh no, I'm in a new angle. But, yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to look at my nose. So anyway, again, with this whole show, and I'm like, it's, it, it just, it's, it's disgusting. So, yeah, don't watch it. And again, it's, it's on Netflix. They have a lot of other shows that are just like... That make me just make my skin crawl. And granted, I'm somebody who likes horror, who likes a little violence, likes action, you know, likes comedy. You know, I, granted, I, I like having fun, but this is like... This is demonic. This is like unhealthy fun. You know what I mean? It's like, this is not really fun. This seems to be cultist evil shit. This is Satanism right here. Like, pure fucking real 
evil Satanism. Not the corporate bullshit that the Satanist groups are doing, but, like, the real evil shit that, like, real Satanists get off on, like. Um, but no, and again, and again, uh, that's what kind of bugs me about this. And also the fact that you have, and again, I, I, I get annoyed with entertainment too. I, and granted, I love entertainment, don't get me wrong, but it's one of those things that is just very tricky too. And, if, and again, you know, it's one of those things, it's like one of those escapes that I really do enjoy, especially, especially in this day and age. For a white man like, like me, video games are pretty much fun. I mean, they're the only last source of entertainment that hasn't been truly corrupted by the mainstream media because they're still the Japanese game makers who blatantly don't give a fuck. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, play Soul Calibur 6 or Yakuza 1, 0 or 1 uh, or uh, Nero Automaton, Nier Automaton. Or any video game that was not corrupted by the uh, SJW mindset of the West, because right now the West is not the best. But we need to get we need to get back our shit back together again. That's what it really just comes down to. Okay, okay, buddy, you're you're gonna just take it. I'm just gonna just be your putts for the evening. You, on the other hand, are just a mule, a mule pickup truck. I feel like I'm playing Grand Theft Auto right now, except I can't go on a homicidal rampages through NYC, uh, excuse me, Liberty City. But that's another thing. People want to get out on top of people for playing video games. And it's like, people are so, like, single-minded when it comes to that. And it's like, I understand the, like, the argument, though, like, the, you know, games that, oh, it's, well, it's training people to be sensitive to violence and stuff like that. Like, motherfucker, real violence and, like, cartoon animated violence and especially, like, video game violence are completely different from one another. Like, real violence is raw. It's like people, when people get shot, they don't, like, blow back or fall back. They drop. Like, they drop like ragdolls. Like, you just turned off the switch. Um, and it's disturbing, too. Like, or, like, there's been movies that, like, some movies have been glorifying it, but, like, other times, like, you get, like, the real movies who are, like, like, Stanley Kubrick's, uh, Full Metal Jacket, the violence in that wasn't geared towards making it entertainment. It was geared towards, you know, real-life situations. Like, Nam was not a fucking fun time for nobody. Nobody. now, my dad's pissed, by the way, I forgot to mention, my dad's pissed off, uh, <laughs> apparently we got the wrong line set, that's all, oh, there it is, okay, good, so yeah, I'm not trying to lose this credit card, so we did lose profit today, so, I don't care, I don't fucking care, um, it just, just, just random shit happens. You know what I mean? Random shit just fucking happens. So yeah, back to video games. People want to like again. It's this idea that like you know, gamers are these underground dweller fuckers, and oh, they have no lives, and they're simps, and they're this, and it's that, and it's like you know what? I like playing video games because they're fun, and there's some games that have really good stories, and yeah, some of them are video gamey stories. But you know what? At the end of the day. I don't want to deal with your bullshit. I don't want to deal with your realistic, excuse me, your realism in your video games. And yes, I'm referring to The Last of Us 2 and their bullshit. You know, the whole idea that video games are not art. You know, and these are the people that are making video games bad. These people who have to defend video games by making video games less appealing to the, the people who actually play video games and more appealing to these fucking artsy fucking, you know, critics who... You know, don't play video games. Who, who don't, who never were gamers in the beginning. Who you know, pond over the messages and the agendas of all these fucking video, the, the, this media. And I mean it too. There's all these people who may just jump. They just jump at the opportunity to be like, my God, the 
the last of us two sex scene was amazing and how, you know, a trans woman, you know, it was making love to the creator and blah, blah, blah. And, and you're just like looking at it going, this is just boring shit. Like, and you can't get away with that in video games. And meanwhile, you have Ghost of Tsushima who just literally takes a katana and cuts that in fucking half. And people are upset with Ghost of Tsushima because it's a masculine story about honor, nobility, and they're upset that they're doing it. They're doing that. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it bugs the crap out of me in that sense because it's like, because it's like, it, it, it just tells me that nobody wants, like, nobody's willing to make things that are just like, just purely entertainment. And that's like the point I'm getting at here. Art has to mean something. Not all the time. I mean, like, look at Mario Brothers. There's no, you know, deep, deep philosophical questioning behind it. It's really about a, a fat Italian plumber rescuing a princess. And it's fun. And we enjoy it and we love it. We like it. You know, we don't care about the agenda of somebody's bullshit worldview. We don't. You know, you want to you wanna play a game that has that? Go play something like that. And again, that's like one of the reasons why I don't like The Last of Us 2. Because they blatantly beat you over the head with that. And, that, and again, I, there, there are so many better post-apocalyptic games, Fallout being one of them. And Fallout does deep messaging well, in my mind, like, from, like, all those games, because it does talk about the post, you know, the the, the the atomic 50s and the whole, you know, war economy of the conservatives and stuff like that, and, you know, the, that, that idea of the Cold War, and, you know, from a 90s perspective. So... Yeah, you can also say it's propaganda, but honestly, it, it really, it was telling you something philosophical. But at the end of the day, like, you know, Fallout 1, I need to find wa the water chip. 2, I need to save my village. 3, I need to find my dad. 4, I need to find my son. New Vegas, I gotta find out who shot me in the head. What it just basically comes down to, all of them. Fallout 76... You know, I gotta find out what happened to the rest of humanity and the overseer and stop the scorch beasts. Scorch, scorch beasts, excuse me. You know, gamers, gamers, what is with the slowing of day things down? You know, you talk about, people wanna talk about gaming as like, you know, gamers being losers and shit like that in basement pillows. Yes, but, you know, and the thing, that's another thing that pissed me off. Joe Rogan and his fucking bullshit. His fucking bullshit of, you know, gaming is a waste of time and it's a really big problem. Okay, Joe, um, I'm speaking as a millennial here who wants to be part of Gen X but can't. Um, that's total fucking bullshit and... As Chris Reagan put it, you know, you talk about people should just take martial arts or jujitsu, which, by the way, I'm sorry, but jujitsu has become one of the most overrated martial art ever out there. It's overrated and absolutely just blatantly just, and I've had enough of it. I, I, I can't, like, so who gives a shit you know how to, you know, wrestle? Who knows if you know how to wrestle? It's like, you know, motherfuckers, like, in a real street fight, people want to punch you, and they will knock you out. You know, not all the time are they going to try to grapple you. They're going to try to punch you straight in the gabba, right in the mouth. You know, that... And I grant it, if you do get into close range, that is a great thing to have. But honestly, at the end of the day, you need striking. You know, Bruce Lee was a striker. You know, and I don't know. And again, Chris Reagan made this point that, you know, if people, you know, you could, you know, you could study, you know, jujitsu and, you know, get really better and get really better. And then one day be like, hey, I'll open up my own school and do that. What if you should, like, it, it, that, that's another thing that just comes down to luck. Like, and that, like, he also pointed out PewDiePie, too. Like, it all goes down to luck and if you're good. I mean, look at PewDiePie. Look at, uh... Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, 
you know, the completionists, John Tron, the Game Grumps, these people who have spent their careers talking about video games, making jokes about video games, you know, playing video games and having a conversation with you. And believe me, it's not easy. I've done it before. I really have done it before. And I was absolute dog shit. One of my, like, I, I will go back to playing Fallout 3 because I did it, like, the first time I did it, I was like, I want to try doing a Let's Play. I want to do it in the honor of Fallout 4. Like, I played Fallout 3 in honor of Fallout 4. And I deleted all those because I felt like some of them were not that funny and some of them were not the best of me at that time. So, and plus, you know, it, again, it's hard and it's like, and plus I was starting out and I was just trying to figure out the whole Let's Play game too. How do I do this? And who do I do? What do I do? And it's not easy. I'll tell you that much. It's not fucking easy. I'll tell you that much. I like talking to a camera though. Almost fucking, almost screwed myself over. That would have been bad. Okay. Come on. I need to get back home as soon as possible. Anyhow, it's it's one of those things that just bugs the shit out. Granted, I, I get where Joe Rogan's talking about gaming addictions and shit like that, but, you know, coming from a guy who, to ask everybody, have you ever tried DMT before? Which, honestly, like, no, Joe, I haven't tried DMT. You know, don't, you know, he gets super defensive when it comes to a conservative uh, viewpoint that disagrees with his own. And he doesn't realize it. He's trying to have a conversation, but honestly, like, I have to like, even like I have to agree with uh with, with with his whole thing with John Carmack and you know with Chris Reagan talking about how him and John Carmack and I forget the other guy's name is um it eludes me for the moment but he he was kind of like belittling them a little bit like you know and that's the whole thing with gamers we get belittled by that shit like. Oh, you guys are losers. You're not doing physical activity. Motherfucker, I lift weights. I like to lift. I also like to punch a bag. I work in construction. So, I don't get why all you motherfuckers think that video games are a waste of time when half the fucking population is playing them. So, do me a favor, Jordan Peterson, Gavin McGinnis, McGinnis, you know, just Steven Crowder, Fucking, I'm trying to think of the other jackasses now. Uh, I'm going to throw an Alex Jones in there. And Joe Rogan. I like, leave us gamers alone. You're picking a fight with an enemy you cannot win against. Because we love a challenge. We love a challenge. And I'll, I'll be damned if you keep fighting us, man. I'll be damned if you try. And that is another thing, too. That is another thing right there. Gamers will unite. Trust me on that one. Because you targeted gamers, and you pick a fight. You pick the fight with the wrong group of people. God damn it! I need a fucking thingy here to keep my camera up. But okay. it's gonna have to be like that. It's the same old song. All around the world, same song. But, and that's the whole thing, because I've lost my train of thought here. What was getting to the point at? Yeah, Joe Rogan. So Chris Reagan made the point that, you know, there's a likely chance that you might be successful in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and be a, you know, JoJo owner. I mean, it, it just bugs the shit out of me when it comes to, like... That kind of mindset, like, oh, well, if, you, if you're not doing anything physical, like, you can make money off of doing something that's considered lazy, you know, over something physical. And not to say that, you know, video games are not that, you know, are productive. Like, you're right, it's not productive, it's entertainment. But 
what is very entertaining is watching somebody like Markiplier or Jacksepticeye or watching the Game Grumps, PewDiePie, uh, all these Let's Players lose their shit playing a video game, especially a horror one, because it's just like, it's funny as shit, seeing, especially with Markiplier, because he has the best kind of reactions to all of them, it's like, or but at Jacksepticeye, I kind of do love his, oh fuck, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh fuck, oh Jesus Christ, fucking hell, I like them both. I love Jack. I love Mark. Especially more recently, I'm starting to like uh, PewDiePie. Especially with the shit he's been going through. I'm like, right on, man. Right on. Like, there was an episode I was watching with Jack uh, with, Mark, with uh, PewDiePie. And he was talking about... And this actually kind of helped me get readjust when I'm picking my nose. Um, reevaluate my situation in life. And he was talking about, like... You know, playing, being who he is, and he was like, I gotta do something else. Like, I can't just be playing video games. And he, you know, started picking up guitar, he started doing this, he started doing that. And I like the fact that they, even these guys are admitting that, like, yeah, playing too much video games can be bad for you. And I like that. I like the fact that he was willing to come out and say that against all that. Which, honestly, to me, that, like, speaks volumes a little bit because it's, like, you're willing to be, like, look. And, again, it goes back to the whole, like, what Joe Rogan said about video game addiction. It's, like, and, again, I don't believe that addiction is inherent. That you can't adopt an addiction. It can develop within your subconscious because you're unhappy about something else. And so you're using something to cope with that. And more times you cope, you use that to cope with the more times it becomes an addiction. Like, for example, with the whole, like, weed smoking thing, it became an addiction for me because I was just on a, in a, on a happy spot, you know, smoking myself into a chip, like, smoking myself into a near grave. And it's like, truth is, it's that truth is, is that I don't blame the substance. I don't blame, like, what I was... I don't blame the substance. I think people blame the substance and they blame the so-called disease or the genetics. And it's like, it's in total bullshit. I think most of these addictions come from a, a need to escape the pain. A need to escape everyday fucking pain. And it's, un it's necessary. It's necessary. I, like, I get it. You do need something to coax with the pain, but... When it becomes a problem in your life, then yeah. And plus, it's like, we're all addicted to the ca caffeine. Like, mostly, everybody, like, you know, all these people who talk about, like, drug addiction or have one addiction of their own they don't address because it's not as popular as, say, drug addiction or something like that. Or alcoholism, which is, like, the big popular two of them. I mean, look at that show, Strange Addiction. There was a lady who was addicted to sniffing uh, gasoline, which is okay, like cool in my book, but like when it becomes a problem, yeah. The same thing can apply to like everything else, and I mean, hell, there's a there's a big porn addiction in America right now with men. Men are like young men from like the ages of 18 to like 40 are having a problem with men, like coaxing with you know with porn addiction and. It really comes down to this, you know, men in their society. I mean, and granted, I know people out there are like, well, just stop watching porn and just stop doing this. And it's like, just doing it, just saying no is not going to help. Sometimes you just have to say no, but other times there's other situations there that are like, un you're in an unhappy spot. So it's like, and again, men's health, mental health is treated like a joke. You know what I mean? It's like... You know, oh, you got a drug addiction? Well, fuck you. You don't have a vagina. Ha, ha, ha. Look at that drunken bastard. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, you can't stop watching. You, you, you watch too much porn and jerk off. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, you know, you talk about, you know, diversity and you talk about inclusion and sensitivity and you talk about all this shit and it's like, at the end of the day, you don't really give a shit because men are hauled up to these fucking standards of 
you know, oh, we got to act tough. We got to be macho 24 7, seven days of the week. We got to be, you know, have this image about ourselves. We got to be tough. We got to be, you know, we can't show our emotions. We can't cry. We can't, you know, be pussies. We can't, you know. And, and women can be as fucking nasty to, to men as humanly possible. Yeah, there's a situation I remember when I was. A wee bit younger. I was uh, trying to lose weight. I was trying to cut down on calories. And I ordered a... And it was at a burger place. I ordered a salmon salad. Like, it had a salmon and it had salad in there. And we went to the whole burger place. And I was like, yeah, I'm just feeling good about myself. I was like, yeah, I ordered this. My mom goes up and goes, Oh, what did your boyfriend order? Like... You're not a fucking dude, all right? There, don't fucking bust my balls. And now she's up my ass about eating too much red meat, which I'm just like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. Don't you tell me how to run my life anymore, you fucking liberal bitch. You regressive, liberal, commie, Nazi. All right? Back the fuck up. All right? Back the fuck up. No longer is your fucking, you know feminism about, you know, equality. It's about conquering. It's about domination, submission. That's what it just comes down to. And I'm so fucking tired of these people. So goddamn tired of them. And that's the truth. I mean, I know people are going to be, oh, I'm going to argue this guy and just type away and be a keyboard warrior. And it's like, that's fine and dandy. Go ahead, disagree with me. But it's the truth. I mean, we treat men's mental health as like a joke. It's like, you know, oh, you're sad, tough shit. Ha ha. Let's put clown makeup on you and do the whole joker thing. It's like, and you know what's funny though? You want to really hear the really sick fucking joke? You know who's fighting more for men's rights and men's health and men's, you know, men's rights and men's, you know, awareness? Gay men. Homosexual men. You want to know why? Because they don't give a shit about the vagina. They really don't. They don't care. In fact, they, they're the enemy of women. You think, oh, well, they, they, they're they they kind of, they, they're friends with women. They're the allies of women because they, you know, they love dick too. And it's like, no, 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 no. Gay men worship the penis more than women do. And I'm not saying that in the sexual terms. I'm talking about like men. Like gay men will fight for more for more men's rights than straight men will. And that is the sad part because straight men have been browbeaten and beaten over the head by these fucking feminists, you know, by all, by women, by modern women, by modern American women who think they know best and, you know, who've been run rampant. And it's like, and granted, I, I accept the freedom, but like, there has to be a moment where you just got to turn around to some some of these people and say, shut the fuck up, bitch. And gay men are doing that. Gay men have been fighting for their rights to live and be happy and free and gay, no pun intended, for a long goddamn time and longer than straight men. Because straight men, like, I'm going to be honest, we've had it easy. We didn't have to fight for our rights. You know, okay, you can have this, you can have that, you can have this. And then all of a sudden we're in 2020 and we're pumping estrogen into boys who are acting out. We're pumping estrogen in our fucking kids and telling them that they can be girls and that they shouldn't be boys. Like, why do you think transgenderism is on the rise? Because men, and especially with boys, why do you think that with boys? Because boys, you know, because it's easy to be a girl in this country than it is to be a boy. Because, oh, we worship the women. We, I'm, I'm sorry to use this quote, but we worship the pussy more than we worship men. All hail the vagina. It's like, and why do you think most of these men are, are coming out being drag queens and stuff like that? So they can earn a little fucking respect. Why do you think Kathleen, you know, why do you think Bruce Jenner cut his dick off? Or he didn't cut his dick off. He's now dressing as a woman because... He gets more respect. I mean, hell, if you're in the house of a Kardashians, you would too. You would too to get a little shot of fame. If I was him, I would just been like, you know what? I'm just going to sit back and just do my own thing. Do my own little Humpty dance. But do the Humpty dump. But it's that, it's that nonsense. It's that absolute nonsense that we're, 
you know, you're not important because you have a penis. It's like that, that's disgusting. That's really fucking disgusting to me. It's like, and granted, if you, if you really do want to dress up like a woman, go ahead. If you really feel like that's what you should do, you want to do, go ahead. I'm not telling you you shouldn't. I'm not saying we should ban it. I'm just saying, like, look, let's look at the psycho- psychologists of this. Like, like, why do you think there's so many people who want to be transgender? Because there's so much pressure into being a woman and a, and a man, too. Like, oh, well, I'll be a, you know, what, like, take a look at these girls wanting to be men. You know, they, they, they're they like, well, I want to be a man because I, I don't want to be objectified and I don't want to, well, tough shit. That's, that's life. Deal with it. That's going to happen. And I know it's harsh, but you have to stand on your own two feet. You've got to look at a, femi- a feminine role model. I'm just going to fucking go with it. Fuck it. Oh, yeah, that's what to do. Uh, uh, that scares the shit out of me. Um, it's this, you know, it's this idea that men are like, you know, well, it's hard to be this gen- so-called gender, so I'm going to switch sides. No. Like, look, I, I get it. This is all the young kids out there. For the young kids out there who, are, who somehow find my channel, who somehow piss off the argument, they look at my thing and they go, okay, what's this guy about? Spread it around, too. Um, you know, if you are a boy who wants to be a girl, try being a boy for a while. Try being a boy until you're 18. Try, if you're a girl and you want to be a boy, try being a girl for a while. Find a fa- fa- feminine role model, find a masculine role model, and try to understand what it means to be feminine, try to find understand what it means to be masculine, don't deny your animus or your anima, anima is for the men, you know, that's the female part, that's the male part of the brain, that's the male, that's the female part of the male brain, and the animus is the male part of the female brain, so, yeah, um, but overall, I think people need to come to the terms that, yes, I was not, like, if you want to dress up like a boy, go ahead. If you want to dress up like a girl, okay, but at the end of the day, just accept yourself. Understand why you're unhappy with yourself and change that. Understand that. If you can't change it, then accept who you are and live your life happily and freely. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say, and again, it's, you know, it, it comes down to this weird society we're living in nowadays. It is. We, we've, I'm not surprised by 2020 anymore, so I'm just prepared for the future. So, that's the end of that. Thank you for staying between these two parts. I'm glad you, I uh, hope you liked them. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, take care, love you, and bye-bye, and remember to stay absolutely awesome. Peace.